Hello everyone. Today we're going to continue on with uh, pointer events, but this time uh, we're going to carry on and show uh, how you can use the pointer events for multiple graphics. Okay, so this is uh, going to be part two. We're going to continue on from the previous one. So uh, if you have not looked at the previous one, I would suggest you looking at that because uh, the code I'm going to continue with is the, is the code that we had developed in the part one video. Okay, so let's go over this real quick. Uh, we'll look at what we have here. We have these booleans, which we're going to be using for our pointer uh, is down and pointer is over, which is for handling the state of uh, our mouse buttons. Basically, if it's still down, if you're holding it down, and also if the pointer is over a particular object. We have these constants here set up for the, the different colors for normal idle mode, over when you're hovering over what the color is, and down for the color down. Uh, onload event, create our standard uh, app uh, application for our Pixie application, 800 by 600 with a background color. And we basically append it to this game div, which is a div in the body tag. And the original code here, we were creating a rectangle, a single one. We're going to modify this, so we're going to create multiples, and then basically these are our uh, event handlers for the pointer up, down, over, out, and up, outside. Okay, so in this example, we're going to do three rectangles. So let's just go and, uh, you know, let's just make some variables for that. Now, granted, if you're going to do it in a bigger program, I want an array or something like that. But for in our purposes, we're going to basically just create uh, three of them. And we'll just kind of place around the stage. And we'll basically show how inter this interaction works with multiple graphics. Okay, so to make things easier, we're going to create a function uh, for creating our rectangles. Okay, so we're going to take this chunk of code out. Okay, and we're going to create a function out of that. Actually, what well, this whole thing here, take this whole thing out. All right, so take that and we will just make a, a function down here for create rect. Okay, I'm going to use uh, x, y, width, height. And I'm going to give it a name, we're going to pass it, and a speed. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll see what that does in a minute, but that's basically we're going to have some additional parameters we're going to add to our rectangles. So we'll paste that in. So once again, we're still going to do the same thing. We're going to create a pixie graphic. All right, and we do the, the fill of normal. And instead of the positioning being the center, we're going to use the positions that we're going to pass in in this function. So x, y, and then we're going to basically the width and the height. All right, so that's where we're going to create that that way and then we're going to remember here for the interactivity uh, to allow it, us to click on the graphic we have to have interactive to true and button mode to true okay so then we use the events we'll do the, do the same events here okay uh, the one thing we're going to do different uh, is we're not going to add to the stage here we're going to return rect return rect okay so, so we're going to create the, our rectangle and we're going to return it to the caller the one thing that's going to be different is we have these parameters right now so we're going to add them to our rect. So I'll say rect dot name equals name. Uh, so we're adding. So the, remember, this is an object. So it's going to be basically a JSON object full of uh, uh, attributes and functions and so forth. And so we're just add our own to it. Now you could do it this way, or you could, if you prefer, you can do it with the square bracket notation like this. Uh, that will work too. Um, or you can simply just dot name. Okay. We'll just add that in, and then we'll take speed. Same thing was we'll rect dot speed equals speed. All right, so now, so once again, so we're creating our rectangle, okay, with the base uh, information for locational, then basically setting our interactions and a button mode, setting the events for what's going to happen when we do certain things to the rect, and then we're adding these name and speed into it, and we're returning it to the caller, and when that's not how you do a return, so that's out. So return rect, okay. So we'll save that real quick. And then we're going to basically create them up here. So instead of we had up here before, we're going to now create our rectangles. So we're going to say R1 equals create rect. And we're going to say, oh, I'm going to use 100, 450, 450. And let's see. So I didn't define a size. And I don't want to, I don't want to um, just hand type it but let's just do for sake of consistency we'll make uh, a another constant here and we'll say it's a 100 another constant here for for rect h for height x 100 
All right, so that way when we create them, we'll just go and put them here. Rect W, Rect H. And I want to give this a name of Rect01, and I'm going to give it a speed of 20. All right. And then R2, we'll do the same thing. Actually, I'm going to cut and paste this here, so it'll make it a little bit easier. So the, what the positionals are going to do is we know their stage is, uh, is a height of 600, and I'm positioning them at 450, so I'm going to be near the bottom. All right. And uh, so what I want to make them do is the speed here, I want to use it to basically move them up the screen when you click on them. So it's kind of a real simple example. So we're going to do that. I'll say this one is rect 02, is speed of 40. All right, I'll paste this one, and I don't want this here. I want it over a little bit, so I'll take 300, and I'll paste this, and this is number two, and this is number three. And I'll say this one is 500. And same position there, and I'll name this one zero three, and a speed of 80, so it'll be a lot uh, greater on that. So now remember the function here returns the rect. So these ones will have the rects. Now once again, the same rule applies. We have to add them to the stage, otherwise they won't appear. So stage dot add child r1, and I'll just copy and paste this a couple times here. Two, three, add them to, and three. Okay. So let's just save this and let's start my live server and see what we get. All right, so there's that, so there we are. All right, so as you see right off the bat, because we have the uh, functions defined here uh, to do the operations, they all work. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. Now clicking doesn't do, doesn't do anything right now. Okay, that's where those properties will come in. So let's go down, so we're gonna just work with the the events now. Okay, so, uh, so when we, so what I wanna do is when I let go, I want to make sure that this particular one that I'm clicking on will move up, All right? So that would be the easiest thing to do. So we'll have to do the up uh, pointer up operation here. So what we can do then is uh, when the pointer is over, which means we're hovering over it, just how the 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 tint is over, we're going to just basically simply do this dot y equals this dot y minus this dot speed. So I have now accessed that. Now, eh, for the sake of argument, we can say console.log, let's see, just say this dot name. Okay, so we do this thing, say, say moving, moving, plus that. So now we're gonna output that into the console, okay? So what we're going to do now is when we mouse up, all right, since this here represents the object that we clicked on, all right, so this function here falls down here, and this will be the particular object we clicked on. And so what we're doing is going to pull out the speed, which we added here when we created the rectangle, and we're going to basically reduce the, uh, the graphics Y location by the speed. Pretty straightforward, right? And for the sake of argument, we're going to console log the name. All right, so that way uh, we can see with uh, you know that we're actually clicking on which particular one, and we can get that particular attribute out of the object. So if I save this and run it now, we see that. So we, that's moving at 20. This is 40, and this is 80. You see how much more it moves. Now, if I pull the console up, you see that. It uh, shows me that I'm doing it. So if I reload this again, all right, one, two, see this is moving rect one, rect two, rect three. So you see that I'm interacting with those. Now this is uh, not the most ideal way to create uh, attributes for your your graphic object here. The best ideal way to do it is to extend the class and make your own class uh, of of object that extends the graphics. So you could do that. We'll talk about that in later videos. But for now, this is just an example of how you can extend the pointer events to multiple objects uh, by simply create, putting it into a, into a create function like this here, and then invoking it here and giving it some additional attributes that we're assigning uh, to the rectangle this way. So it's uh, kind of quick and dirty, not really the, the you know, proper way to do it, but you know it'll get you where you need to go sometimes. All right, so I hope you found this useful. 
Uh, I'll probably continue on with another one. Uh, I think the next one I'll do is to actually show you how you do the same type of thing and apply it to a sprite because that's probably going to be more applicable to actually creating a game or something more interesting than using square rectangle graphics. All right, so if you haven't done so, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.